good morning it's saturday and it's time to get out in the garden because we have been having the most stormy rainy weather which means i've not been able to get out there and it has rained this morning but i think the rest of today is going to be clear skies so um it makes it a little tricky because it means if you're going to go do the veg beds they're really wet but i'm determined so i'm gonna what i was thinking of doing if it's this wet is just getting down there and just taking big bits out and clearing it a little bit i did that in the other video and lots of you were talking about no dig no dig is definitely on my radar and that's why i was doing it kind of painstakingly some of you was like why don't you just use a hoe and just get rid of all the weeds so with no dig you're supposed to put cardboard down and then let that kind of disintegrate and you're supposed to do that over winter and last year we did it and it was a bit late and it kind of interfered with the seeds because the cardboard was so close to where the compost is and these are established veg beds so that compost that's there and the the soil that's there is really lovely soil so i don't want to be putting uh, cardboard down <laughs> that um, doesn't disintegrate quick enough and then the plants can't get that lovely rich soil underneath so I'm just carefully plucking out the weeds and the old plants. Just my level of dis disorganization from not doing it in the winter, which I, I just completely forgot. I need to like set an alarm or something <laughs> this year. So I remember yesterday was Alex's birthday and we had such a wonderful day. We um, basically just took the day off. We had a relaxing morning. I baked Alex a cake, which you will have seen in the last vlog. And we, went to a pub, went to Copper House in Hale, and they do delicious pies, and they've got like a half price deal at the minute. And then we just went for a walk and just went to a few different pubs. We went to a pub called The Bucket of Blood. We went to the Royal Standard. There was another one. I don't remember, but we went to a few different pubs and just went for a little walk with Roxy. Um, and it was just so cozy, and we just had a drink at each pub, and so she heard my, she heard her name. So you have to join me. Mwah. And it was really lovely. And just a nice reminder, I was saying to my dad, because he came to pick us up kindly, so we could have a drink. Um, I was saying to him how nice it is to just have an afternoon where you're not, you don't have any plans. And this is really tied into all my conversations recently about slowing down and slow living and not having tasks that result in productivity or being paid and hobbies that are just for fun. And I think that um, yesterday made us realise that as a couple um, in our relationship, it's really important that we have time like that every week. So moving forwards, we're going to try and every week do something like that, where there's an afternoon um, at the weekend or on a weekday where we there's no like schedule. There's no, we have to be somewhere at a certain time. We have to come home. We just go and do something nice. We just go walk Roxy. There's no time limit. Um, cause yeah, so often even with walking Roxy, it's like, we've got to get home. It's been an hour. We've got to get, get off now. And, um, I think it's really important for your mental health to have time where there's no time limit and there's no sense of rushing, especially if you're an anxiety girly like me and an anxiety boy like Alex, it is, is important to not have any sense of rushing. It ends up being about the same amount of time anyway. I feel like probably rushing makes it more complicated. So yeah, it was a nice lesson and, um, it doesn't matter what we do. It could be that we stay at home. It could be that we just have an afternoon where we watch some movies or we, you know, uh, play some games together or do some reading and listen to music. But I just think that as a couple who are married, I think it's really important for our relationship and our happiness to have that time off where we're just laughing, um, not thinking about serious things. We were just like asking questions about each other and just laughing our heads off. And I was finding photos. I was, I came up with this game because I had no internet where I'd scroll through my phone, find an old photo and then ask him what year it was. And he was so bad <laughs> every time he got the answers wrong. And it was making me laugh so much and also quite cute to go down memory lane and see all the different photos from different eras of our life. Anyway, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and I'm gonna go to the bottom of the garden. I also need to move the wisteria that we've chopped because that's been sitting on the patio because it started raining as soon as we finished and I haven't been out to do it since because it's just been torrential rain every single day. We've had such bad flooding. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in Cornwall. So um, I'm gonna get out and um, maybe put that in the brown bin. And we do have to hang up the last little bit of wisteria. So I'll get Alex to help me with that. I think he might wash the car. Lovely, lovely start to the weekend. Um, let me show you the cake just once again. Because this cake 
um, was so delicious. It's not the prettiest. I definitely have to work on my presentation. You can see the jam, because this jam is lovely jam. It's got like whole strawberries in it, but we ate it yesterday. And just look at that sponge. Like I'm so happy with this sponge because of how tall it is and also how it's not soggy because so many vegan sponges, you'll notice that they become very dense at the bottom. When you don't have egg to be the binding ingredient to make everything sort of sit evenly and fluffy, the if you're using replacements like oil, then it can like all sink to the bottom and become quite a heavy or quite a moist cake, which isn't, isn't a bad thing by any means. Like that's kind of like a, a nice thing sometimes, but this recipe was, I, I think I shared it in the last video, I tried to put it on screen, but it's like an adapted recipe from my uh, fluffy lemon tray bake where I just did 1.5 of that recipe for the sponge. I'll link it in, a, in the blog post so that you can use that. And um, I think that I need to write this up when the new website goes live. I'm gonna write this up as an actual Victoria sponge recipe. So I literally did that fluffy lemon tray bake. I timed the ingredients by 1.5 and I removed the lemon zest and the lemon juice and replaced it with a teaspoon of vanilla extract in the cake and then also a teaspoon of vanilla extract in the frosting. The frosting does not need to be multiplied by 1.5. I had loads of leftover and this has, as you can see, way too much frosting in the middle, but I just went for it because I was like, I'm not going to waste it and Alex will love it. But you just stick with the amount of frosting that's in that recipe and just put vanilla extract and um, a, a dash of milk over the lemon juice and zest. And it's so fluffy and so delicious. And I've tried so many vegan cakes. Please let me know though, actually, because it's, it's an area that I want to explore more because I've been so focused on cooking for a long time. I do love baking, but um, I would love to learn more about vegan baking and improve my own vegan baking. So if you have some recipes or cookbooks that you swear by when it comes to vegan baking, please let me know in the comments because I will buy that cookbook and I'll work my way through it and um, see see kind of like the strengths and weaknesses of different recipes because it, it's so much fun baking and it's something that I think the reason I don't do it as much is because it is a little bit more of a challenge because you have to be very accurate with it and it slows you down. But you know, maybe that's what I need. <laughs> ignore the presentation, ignore the, the jam falling out. It was seriously good. I also need tips on frosting. Look how much there, how much um, buttercream there was. Way too much and all the jam slid out. But um, I'm just very impressed with the inside. And I'm not gonna go on about the cake anymore. Another reason I loved that recipe is because it's very simple. Growing up, I was always taught the, you know, the equal amount egg flour sugar ratio sort of thing so i love that this recipe is oil flour sugar and there's an element of it that's just very basic and you can use a food processor so it's not there's not this like over complication of having to do lots of different steps or fandangle it to make it vegan so i'm just making myself a coffee um which is enjoyable so if you make it let me know it's daffodil season, so I picked these up in M&S, and I know that they're Cornish daffodils. Fun fact, loads of daffodils. In fact, I would imagine most daffodils come from Cornwall. When you drive around Cornwall, where I live is amongst lots of agricultural land, so there's lots of kale around us at the minute. But last year, I think it was cauliflower, and then there's also loads and loads of daffodil fields. There's less this year, but I think it's because they alternate, basically, the fields every year to keep the soil healthy and um, they just sort of rotate the crops but daffodils are everywhere at the minute and there's so many fields and pickers out like there's a stretch of road that i was i drive all the time and the other day just coming down the hill it was just like daffodils on daffodils and then just rows of people picking them and it just looks so romantic and it was like i'd gone back in time i don't know just like a nice a lovely thing it's kind of lovely to see that so and i was actually in mns the other day and i could overhear that i think they were having some kind of business meeting and she was i guess the maybe the shop manager or front of front of um what do you call it like marketing or not, not marketing but you know someone who does the kind of designs in the shop floor um she was saying like we really ought to have the cornish provenance here because people really care about that and it just says british flowers or british daffodils it didn't say cornish daffodils because she was like obviously they're all cornish so that that would be a, a bonus and i was like i was thinking secretly in my mind i felt like interrupting and being like yes i agree <laughs> anyway coffee time
It started to rain outside, so I've made myself some delicious mushrooms on toast. And I cannot wait to dig in. Look how good that looks. And of course, the second I came inside, the heavens closed, didn't open, the blue skies came. <laughs> <laughs> So everything is really waterlogged in the beds and it's becoming really difficult. So I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna tidy. So there's lots of things that are just hanging around the place, uh, around the front, down here, that I just wanna move and make everything feel a bit clearer. Cause yeah, I can't, I can't pull the, the weeds up because it's just so waterlogged. Cause it has been torrential rain. So we'll need a few more days of sunshine before I can do this. Alex has just called me out here to show you this. I thought you'd find it enjoyable. Like we're at the car wash. Yeah. Not at the, the car wash. Not the proper foamy stuff, but it's still quite fun. Very good. You've even parked it over the drain. Huh? You've even parked yeah. it over the drain. I'm officially giving up on gardening today. It's just so windy and cold. I feel like every time I go out there, it starts to rain. But um, I managed to clean up all the wisteria. Alex has cleaned the car. I've brought some stuff around the front that's rubbish. So I've done a little bit and that's what matters. Feeling really tired. I think it's because we were out yesterday afternoon um, and it's that time of day, I always feel tired. It's three o'clock, um, so, uh, I was watching Love is Blind and that's really addictive, but I'm up to date now. So I'm gonna do some reading. I was gonna do the utility room and I even had it on the calendar as the hallway was gonna be done this weekend. I was gonna film that. I just don't feel like it today, maybe tomorrow, um, because it's just, it's becoming one of those things that's just on my mind all the time because obviously we started the hallway and then we never finished it because the cupboards need doing. And I, I just, with things that like are half finished, I just can't be bothered. It's almost like I want the carpenter to come to do the carpentry and then I feel like it's worth finishing because part of me is just like, what is the point in me spending time painting skirting boards and doorways when they could potentially get messed up if there's a tradesman? Which, yeah, it really just confirms it for me. It's like, I just don't think it's a thing that I should do at the minute. Um, but we can't um, get the cupboards done at the minute because it's just not a priority financially and also just like timing wise. And I know that carpenters are very booked up but there's other things that need to be done. We need to fix our door that goes into our office and our guttering, that needs to come first because it's, it's just like a practical thing over like an aesthetic thing. So I go back and forth because then I'm like, well, if it's gonna be a really long time till we finish the hallway, I may as well just paint then it's like, I don't know, it's just not, it's just not that important. But then I feel bad that I'm not really showing many renovation things at the minute because it's just, but then that's just, that's just the way it is. Hopefully you're still enjoying just living my life, doing normal day-to-day -day things. And when it gets sunnier, we can do the office because I can actually go out there and like spend a day. Whereas now at the minute, there just isn't a day. It's always raining. <laughs> So we'll do that in the spring. Anyway, I'm gonna go upstairs with a cup of tea and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read my book and potentially end up falling asleep, I bet. I do need to walk Roxy at some point today, but it's just it's so cold, I don't wanna go outside. Alexa? 
play classic FM. I'm just gonna make a vegetable soup and yeah. blend it all in. Good morning, it's Monday morning. Um, I kind of stopped vlogging this weekend. I had a really just not great weekend mental health wise. And um, I don't know, I need to um, release a bit of the pressure because that happens to me. And I guess like, I guess I've become a bit tarnished on the internet with that like, because people are quite judgmental and mean, when I have bad mental health days, I just don't vlog and then I don't really mention it and then I feel better the next day and then that's when I'm vlogging. And um, some of you might say, that's ridiculous, Maddie, you're always talking about my, your mental health. Because <laughs> I am. But um, it's something that I live with and it's something that I experience and I guess I'm getting to the age now where I'm not like shying away from being completely honest about it because I'm just fed up of people or trolls making me feel like I shouldn't talk about it or that it's because I'm first world problems or because, you know, some people say stuff like, oh, it's because of your diet or it's because of your lifestyle or it's because of something you've done. And I'm just, I'm just done with that narrative because I don't believe that narrative. I'm not someone who believes that if you experience anxiety and depression, that it's your fault. Um, I think it's an illness that there are lots of reasons for and it's very nuanced and complicated. And anyone who's trying to like reduce it to something basic and simple, has no idea what they're talking about. They're not a doctor. They don't have understanding of the, the, the problem. And they are blanketly trying to, I don't know, they're blanketly trying to say something about someone they have no idea about. Nobody but, but me and my doctor or therapist could know what's wrong with me, even if I explained it explicitly to you. Uh, that's just the truth because you couldn't, it's impossible for you to know. Anyway, I deal with um, feeling very anxious and depressed and there are things in my life that make that happen. Sometimes it's just a product of my own head. And sometimes you get in that stage where you are depressed and you're doing all the right things and you just, you can't necessarily get out of it. And that's really, 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 really tough. And um, I guess the older I get, the more I realize, I used to think that it was something that you just like accomplished. You, you got over your anxiety or you got over your depression and that, that was it forever. And that's just not how it works. You can get over it for a year and then suddenly it appears out of nowhere. Um, it can be triggered by something or it could just be, I don't know, I guess being 
overwhelmed by things um, and I would like to be honest I'm not no longer necessarily going to be sharing why that's happening for me because I feel like I used to share a bit more about why and be a bit too personal so that's not really uh, what my aim is here it's more that I don't want to be someone on the internet who's sharing my lovely life in Cornwall cooking from scratch and living at home and going to garden centres and going for life walks with my dog and and not showing that I'm a person and I'm normal um, there's lots of conversation now around lots of people on the internet you know sharing these very idealised lifestyles of homemaking and looking after their children and their husbands and cooking everything from scratch and it's I guess it's it's hard to know the other side of things um, and it's it's I guess a privilege that most people can't have access to so I suppose I want to share that yes I have down days where it means I can't really do anything and I don't feel capable and um, that's that's the case for me and that's really really tough and I'm gonna continue to just share it because it's my life and lots of you actually have been really kind recently in my vlogs where I've said oh I'm second guessing my vlogs and if they're boring and you've said no no they're not boring I just like watching whatever you're doing and that does mean a lot because it is hard I always think oh gosh I should be doing something fun and exciting um, or covering up if I'm feeling down and putting on a brave face um, when I guess what's more appropriate is for me to just be truthful about what's what my day is so that's what I'm experiencing the minute I'm having down days and up, ups and downs and trying to get through it and actually vlogging helps me because it makes me focus makes me focus on the positives makes me think of you know you guys and how this will make you happy and, and improve your day or in, get you some relaxation or enjoyment so yeah it is nice to pick up the camera again and vlog most days and see how that makes me feel and improves my day it's blue skies outside i did my five minute journal and that is something that really does help to focus on the nice things because you can have a really bad day and i really struggled yesterday to do my journal because i was like the highlight of your day i was like well i don't really feel like there was a highlight but then i found small highlights in my day that can kind of make you think okay actually no today was hard but there were still some things that I can think of that are nice and um, probably at the end of today I'm going to say that the blue skies were very lovely today because I haven't seen blue skies in a while and that's lovely. I'm going to go this afternoon for a walk with my niece and my dad which will be also a highlight and I think we're going to go back to Penrose because that's such a nice walk. I'm sure if I'll take Roxy because last time it was a bit tricky with all of us um, to, to like monitor. I, I might but we'll see and I'm going to maybe nip into the shop just to, for a few things if we need a few extra things we've got a Riverford coming tomorrow so I'm going to look at what's coming with Riverford and then think about some recipes maybe if um, there's anything else that I would need from the shop just to top up on it's a week where I because I was feeling down I usually on a Sunday meal plan and I just didn't I just did Riverford and just got the basics and I'm just going to eat whatever this week because I don't have the time or energy so yeah and this morning I have been working on our website it takes so long because we're having to manually go through all of my recipes which have been obviously I've been posting them since 2018 on my Squarespace web website we're moving over to WordPress just because there's more flexibility Squarespace is excellent highly recommend it if you are starting a new website or you have a business it is incredibly great it's done me you know good stead for years and years and years and I would recommend it to anyone and it's amazing amazing website provider but if you are trying to like improve your website in a more detailed way and have a, a more I guess detailed search function and different plugins that will sit well on Google and you just want it to be a bit more of a complicated thing WordPress is good for that because you can just add so much more so um, the way it's indexed on Google if you ever see those um, like recipes that just pop up you can only get that with WordPress so I'm, I've just been focusing on moving it all over and it's been ta it's taken us I think about a year maybe even longer we've been working on it I've been talking about it for ages but we're getting to the point now that we are it's taking so long and we're just we're just rushing through the recipes now and just getting them getting them done best as they can be so I will launch the website and it will be ready to go and exciting and I'll have new recipes and new posts every week the newsletter will go back live and we'll just have to go back through the older recipes and tweak them a little bit just to make them perfect they're like fine as they are but we want to make them perfect we want to reshoot the recipes we want to you know make sure the seos are working everything's functional there's links there's all the things that you need to make it easier for you when you're following along with my recipes but it's a, a long-term goal and i think we're focusing now on just getting the website launched so i can share posts share 
content, share newsletters, and have that kind of other platform that's all mine. And I'm really looking forward to when that happens. Hopefully I think it will happen soon in spring and we've got loads of new recipes as well that will go live, which is exciting. So that's what I've been working on and I'm gonna work on that for the rest of today and then probably sign off from the vlog. But we are having soup for lunch. Oh, oh my, no, yeah, soup for lunch. We have a bit of mac and cheese for dinner. I made this yesterday and Alex made a lovely loaf of bread. It was essentially, I think I showed it to you in the vlog, I think I vlogged it. I essentially just did beans, white beans, um, potatoes, broccoli, carrot, onion, um, and I threw some peas in there and blended it all and put a bit of nutritional yeast and lemon juice and herbs, think coriander and parsley, and it was seriously delicious. So I'm gonna make that again for lunch with some of Alex's delicious fresh bread because that is all I want in my tummy. So let's heat this up. And thank you. I was mentioning about your comments just then. Thank you so much for all the lovely comments recently. I feel like I, you can probably sense my insecure or I guess low self-esteem at the minute um, and you're all being really supportive and saying no we love your videos so I really appreciate that thank you so much it means a lot because it's hard to show up on the internet these days um, or at least I'm finding it hard these days because the internet is changing constantly and it's increasingly I guess a scary uh, landscape to feel like you're irrelevant or like there are new things happening all the time and there's new content creators and new platforms and you've got to keep up and I feel like YouTube's my like quiet lovely community of people who just like switching on because it's relaxing. Just like how I watch other people, uh, I need to remember that. But actually when I'm watching other people, I really don't care very much about what they're doing. I just like watching them because I like them. So they could be doing anything and I think, oh, that's nice because they're nice people. <laughs> they do nice cute things I relate to. Anyway, nine minutes later, let's make soup. Do you want soup? Yeah, I've got I didn't take you with me, but I just went on a lovely walk at Penrose with my dad and my niece, which was lovely. And now I'm at the natural store again, <laughs> just to get a couple bits, nothing crazy. So um, I'll show you what I get when I get home. I don't really want to take the camera in today. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly show you what I got because I only got a few things. We got some mango. This is my guilty pleasure. There's nothing guilty about it. The only guilty thing is that it's £4.92 for 250 grams which is excessively expensive. But these to me taste just like Thailand because in the supermarket that we um, lived near, the sort of mall, they sold uh, dried mango and it was like nothing on this planet. Like it tasted a lot better than this, but it was so unbelievably delicious. And this is so similar. It's not as good because it's not Thai mangoes. Or at least I don't think they are, unlikely um but my goodness me it just takes me back and it's such a nice snack and obviously it's fruit so they're kind of like sweets as well it's so so sweet uh callow belgian dark chocolate so i love like shopping in a natural store like i know it's super expensive but when i go to the supermarket i do end up spending more money because while like local shops are more expensive and they're definitely not accessible for everybody i'm not saying that at all but if you do have access to one um and your budget isn't um like you haven't got a heavy budget then i just find if i go to the supermarket i'll end up spending an extra 10 pounds on um various like snacks or things that weren't on the list whereas when i go into the natural store um, and I get Riverford, I end up sticking to quite a good budget, I think for, for two people, for someone who does like recipe creation, this week it's gonna be, I think the, the Riverford was 45 and then this was 18, so that's 65 pounds between two. I think that's not bad at all and that's being organized and that's gonna cover us for the rest of the week. We've obviously already got loads of stuff in our cupboards but I just think that on average we're spending between 50 and 75 pound a week and um, I think that's quite decent. Um, obviously everyone's budgets are different. Some of you will say, wow, that's cheap. Some of you will say, wow, that's expensive. It's just, it's just dependent. This is so funny because I literally um, just saw, I don't even remember where. I remember, I just saw that this was a thing, coconut kefir. And obviously kefir is really great for your gut and they had it in the shop they don't normally have it so i picked this up i'm going to taste it um 
and see what it tastes like. So it's something that you can drink or you can add to your yogurt in the morning. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it into my smoothie or um, try it with like a protein shake. Don't know how that will go down, but maybe just drink it on its own. Some organic chickpeas. These are quite fun because they're different colors. So I'm gonna use this tonight. The main reason I got this stuff is because we're making curry and I didn't think we had chopped tomatoes or coconut milk. So I got two tins of um, Bayona organic coconut milk and that was it that was very expensive for that small amount of things but you know i mean now i'm thinking about it, alex would scream if you found out that i just spent that much money on that amount of stuff but it brings me joy <laughs> like i'm an adult i can spend my money how i like <laughs> looks like alex has been working hard mowing the lawn smells like spring i'm back from the shop lighting is hideous uh, but i'm making a curry so I've just popped the brown rice on to cook i always try and rinse rice i know that sounds so obvious but i went years never doing that which i think in different cultures is kind of like some people do it some people don't some people find it gross some people find it normal but it makes a massive difference to how the rice cooks so i really recommend you do that um so i've done one part rice two part liquid water put some salt in i bring it to a boil um and then I put the lid on and reduce the heat and let that cook until it's all absorbed. And then I turn it off and let it steam for another like five or 10 minutes. That's my kind of way of doing rice. And I know that so many people struggle with making rice and it's not complicated. Um, you literally just put it on. If you have a normal hob, not an induction hob, you can do the method where you put the lid on and you turn the heat off completely because the ring will stay warm if it's been boiling for a little bit. Um, but that's called like the the reduction method where you do like a thumbs width above the rice. Google that. For an induction hob, this is what I do because doing the other method never worked with an induction hob because the heat goes off completely. We're making a um, curry, just really quick. I can't be bothered to think about kind of curry with this green curry paste. I've mentioned this before. This is one I get in the, um, the Asian shop in Truro and the brand is May Ploy and it's really, really good. It lasts a really long time. And then we've got onion. Um, oh no, is that mouldy? Uh, this is the issue with organic, is everything goes mouldy so quickly. So this is from last week from Riverford. <sighs> it's so frustrating, because it's like, I understand why it's not like, it's just because it's organic. You have to use it so quickly. Well, this is not going to be very vegetable-y. Gosh, what are we going to put in it? Right, well, there goes a wasted broccoli. That's really annoying. I've got bok choy left over, um, so we'll use that. Spring onion, carrots, onion, <laughs> um, chickpeas and tofu. It'll be fine. It just will be a very basic, just throw what you've got in the cupboard kind of recipe because it's Monday and the delivery comes tomorrow. We don't have any other vegetables. No, we've just got loads of lettuce, which I really need to... We have a cabbage, but cabbage would be a bit strange because it would make the curry go purple. I need to make a slaw out of that. So, ooh. Um, I've got a delivery coming from Riverford, like I said, and one thing I've decided to do, which I'll show you in the next video, is do a bit more meal prepping. So I'm getting a much more organized with like, I guess having a bit more of a routine of when I go shopping and when the food shop arrives. This week I said I didn't do a meal plan, but I'm, I'm better at like having a routine with it rather than just kind of shopping as and when I run out of things or when I need them for shoots and stuff. So what I want to start doing is for lunches, like batch cooking soups and salads and kind of ingredient prepping a little bit. So tomorrow when Riverford comes in the next vlog, I'm gonna like chop up all the lettuce. I'm gonna make a slaw out of the cabbage, um, bake some tofu um, and just chop everything up ready to go. So you have like a container of salad, a container of protein like tofu or chickpeas um, and then like a, a dressing or something. And I, I think that that will really, really help me if I do that on a Tuesday because I can always share it with you as well, which will be kind of interesting. So see that for the next video, but I'm gonna get cooking. I'm gonna pop on a vlog and I'll show you what I make, but it's gonna be a throw everything in the pan kind of vibe. <laughs> I know this sounds basic, but just to reiterate with the rice, now this is boiling. I'll 
put the lid on and then reduce the heat down to, it's very different with induction hobs, the heat is like way higher. So if I put this down to like five, that's like a low heat really. Uh, I don't know if there's something wrong with this hob or whatever, but if I put it down to three, there's no heat whatsoever. So basically I bring it down to like a really gentle simmer, probably four, and then let it do its thing. And then after maybe about, well it's brown rice, it would take a lot longer. Um, with white rice it's much quicker but after a certain amount of time all the water will absorb and then I turn the heat off and let it steam and it always gets perfect rice. Please just tell me what's on your mind Cause I don't have time to figure it out to figure it out we haven't been our best for long i think that we're just holding on to something that won't work out maybe we should walk away to say goodbye and go a separate way your best as well 